today I take you to the landlocked country of Luxembourg. On top of the hill is this picturesque castle commanding a fine view of surrounding parts of the valley. This stunning building dates back to the late 19th century and is steeped in history. The building was constructed by Mr. Galois, who came from an important Luxembourgish family that was prominent in politics and industry in that time period. He was the head of the household and had 13 children by two wives and made this castle the home of his family. As his children grew older and decided to live on their own, he and his wife at the time found the castle to be too voluminous and decided to turn it into a hotel and to live on a smaller scale. Ultimately, Mr. Galois died at the age of 64 and the castle was sold. This time not to a Luxembourgish family, but by an Arab family who bought the property as a summer residence. The castle thus became the new property of a prosperous oil sheikh and his family. Their Islamic faith is still reflected everywhere in their former holiday home by the day of today. But now comes the interesting part that we observed during our research. The last Arab owner of this property died in 2015. This is the exact year that the former king of Saudi Arabia died and we see this important person everywhere in photos spread throughout the property. And it gets even crazier. The owner has exactly the same name as this former king of Saudi Arabia. However, further research refutes this theory. We then arrive at a Facebook profile of the real owner, of which we will not share much in respect for the next Afghan. Here we find the heartbreaking reports of the loss of their loved one. After the sorrowing event, his family never returned from Saudi Arabia to visit their castle. Instead, I am visiting it today to take you into the bewitching story of this Arab family and give you a glimpse into their lives. So welcome back everyone, it's a brand new video, it's a very cold winter day and today I'm actually in Luxembourg again, it's been a long time to document an abandoned place in this country and yeah like you can see we are walking up this steep road to eventually make a way to the castle right uphill over there. Apparently this castle was owned by a rap shake and it has a beautiful history like you've seen in the introduction this castle has also been a hotel one day I'm really excited to document another place in Luxembourg it's been a long time so let's go so apparently we have to go up these stairs over here
you can definitely tell for how long nobody has walked on these stairs over here. Entirely covered by collapsed tree trunks. So right over there it is. Well, this must be it. Look at it. Castle tower there on top. You found an entrance? Okay. Door is literally straight open for us. I can't believe it went that easy, to be honest. A little bathroom over here. But this floor does not look very promising at all. Oh, but there are some stairs over there. Very dog in here. Massive doors. It's a little bit fluted over here. I think this was used as a storage to cool their products, maybe some wines. And that's the thickness of the door was actually for the insulation to keep it cool. This must have been another storage part. It's all numbered. Oh, look at this chair. Actually looks like one of those oriental chairs. Very cool. There's also a chandelier over here. I guess this part was actually for all the gas, water and electricity supply. Like a typical basement. Full of mold over here. Okay, so it's time to go upstairs and you're going to be amazed. This castle was once owned by Rabdan Abdullah Ismail. And that was the name of this Arabic Sheikh. First things we see are these oil tanks over here, these gas tanks. Look at the tiles on the ground. Where was the toilet? But nothing spectacular so far. Just wait for it as it's going to get better and better. Over here is even an entrance to the outside again. The door is literally standing open. You can see the frost on all the vegetation. It's definitely winter time now. It's minus four degrees, I think. Where was the doorbell? Not working anymore, but you know what, guys? I'm gonna close the door in order to protect this place from any damage by nature and of course burglary and theft wow have a look at the stairs going up and you know what I really like in particular the fact that I've seen many castles so far but never in Luxembourg and the style interior is very different from the French castles I've explored 
I also liked the quote over here, don't worry, be happy. Okay, so here was the part where they did all the laundry. You can see the dryer and the washer over here. Still even some clothes hanging up. Some cleaning tools. And this was their toilet. The only place where I've seen toilets like this was actually on the French highway. And they are always very, very uncomfortable. Even still a lot of their potting products are here. And something from Disney. So I guess that these people also maybe had little children coming over here. Maybe the offspring of the Arabic family. Squeaking a little bit, but over here it's again entirely stuffed with all these cleaning products. Okay, so let's go to the next room. It's a little bit dark in here and I regret because I did not take my flashlight, but this is definitely a grand room with all the seats over there. Actually look at the wooden bars. It's a typical German style and the fact that they talk German and French in Luxembourg actually makes sense why it's built like this. I think firstly it was actually owned by German people who actually owned the hotel. So here you can see all the leather seats. I think this was definitely one of the grand rooms. Also here in the corner, there is this beautiful grandfather clock. Westminster, so it's from the UK. I hope everyone is able to see everything well, but also look at the details over here. You already are starting to see some Arabic ornaments on their furniture. But that's not the only thing. Look above, the little tapestry, the Arabic language, all these signs. I'm wondering, I know that we have some Arabic viewers, so anyone watching right now, please Leave down in the comment section if you can translate this, what it's saying, because I'm really curious. And I'm right next to it is actually a portrait from 1981. And that's actually the premises that we are exploring right now. The exterior of the castle. It's not a very, very huge castle, like some we have seen in France, but this one definitely has a lot of charm. And now I'm wondering, yeah, look at it. The electricity is still working in this place. It must have been vacant, I think, at least for a decade now. So it makes me really curious why the power is still running. It's crazy. Let's turn it off because we do not want to cause any fire in this place. Now let's go to the massive Ingelkoek fireplace and just have a look at all the details and ornaments on the sides. It's impressive. Those are actually like, this is a moon over here. Those look like, I don't know, maybe it's a bird or maybe it's a dragon. Again, a moon over here. Such a unique fireplace. And this one is massive in size too. Look at the building statues over here. The dragon as well. And then look over here. This is actually a massive bellows. And also look on the side, how the way it's been stuffed. So for the people who do not know what this device was used for, 
it makes sense that it's laying here in front of the fireplace because they actually use this to pump air inside of the fireplace to eventually light up the fire. And then right next to it, there is also still some tools for the fireplace. I really, really like this fireplace. Very unique. You can definitely tell that we are not exploring a normal building. But then apart from the fireplace, look at the stained glass. It's wonderful. And again, it's incredibly detailed. Oh, and look at the horn over here, hanging on the wall. Wow. Also here in the coat rack, some very wonderful details. And there is again another instrument hanging. As an instrument? I think so. I think you used to blow air inside of air and eventually you could produce a sound, but I'm not sure. For any people who know what this device was used for, again, feel free to leave it down in the comment section. So over here are some fake flowers standing. You can definitely tell that copper webs are starting to grow between them. And then, like I mentioned, look, the wonderful stainless glass. Again, over here, the list on the wall, there is a lot of Arabic things standing. I'm really wondering if those were like quotes or maybe something from religion. And also the main door. You can tell they try to barricade it, but again, they implemented such neat stainless glass inside of its design. On this side, there is a similar pattern. I guess that this place was definitely a very comfortable place back in its days with all the leather seats here. People would just have been gathering around. But then have a look at the book over here on the table. It's all written in Arabic. very hard for me to understand anything. I think this was the right side. Down below was actually the number of the page. There is also a photo of an Arabic child and it's literally in front of the same fireplace, right in front of me over there. You're crazy. And this was actually the bellows I just showed on the same photo. I'm wondering from what year this photo is dated to get an imagination when the people left and why, but there was no date on it. Carefully putting the photo back where it was laying here on the table. Whoa, over here it's saying Geburtstag, that means birthday, 17 years. So person who lived there actually became 70 years old. And those all look like parts of a game, a board playing game. Anyways, enough about this room, let's go to the next one now. So let's see if I press this button. Yeah, the light is also still working in this room. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> let's turn it off again. And let's go to the next room right in front of me. 
This is actually a quite plain room, but you can tell that it was once definitely an elegant place. It smells very clean inside of here, but what worries me and what I think is the reason why this place became abandoned is because of an older age. You can definitely tell a wheelchair over here, but besides that, a hospital bed. So the person who was spending his last days here was actually hospitalized at his home, was homebound. And I guess this person also had a quite bad health condition. And that actually makes me quite sad. Makes you aware of the impermanence of life. I mean, one day we all go. And right now I'm literally exploring a place which was once somebody's home. This was not just a normal place. In this case, it might have been a home from this man, the Arabic Sheikh, Abdul Rahman. This could have been him. Who knows? There's a lot of stuff actually stuffed in these boxes here. Also over there are still many things. Some coffee, some books, some glasses. And also look at the tapestries again there. Typical Arabic. But look how many wheelchairs actually. It's not only that one, no. It's literally one, two, three, four wheelchairs. Maybe they had a big part of their Arabic family actually living in the castle. That's strange. There's also this motor bicycle <laughs> with all these flames on it. I guess it belonged to a child. Then look above the door, there are again some Arabic signs. I can literally not understand anything of this language or relate a single letter. Well, and then if I go through that door, we actually come inside of another wonderful room with a lot of seats. Have a look. Wow. It's absolutely wonderful. Again, we can see people from the family tree over here. I guess those were some other shikes, descendants. Look over there. I'm wondering who Abdul Rahman was. It must have been one of these three men. But who? They look a lot like each other. I guess that man was actually the father of him, the person who lived there. Again, there is an incredibly detailed wooden carved fireplace. And the carvings on this one are absolutely impressive. Just look at them. They are literally everywhere. And then inside of the fireplace, they've also implied this sign, which I've seen multiple times before now in the iron work. And you've seen rooms where the electricity was still working. Well, maybe somebody noticed, but my friend again put on the lights which definitely helps a lot if I forgot my camera lights in the car. So I'm happy that I actually have lights inside of the building and I think it solves the problem, right? Then I want to point out this clock over here. Again, to me, I don't know if it is typical Arabic, but it also has a little bit of an oriental style in it, something Asian. But I really, really like this clock. And it's actually standing on a table which has exactly the same design. And then I want to point out this majestic chandelier along with the ornate details in the center of the ceiling. Wow. 
can definitely tell it's something majestic and that this place was not a normal place. Also look at the woodwork before entering the next room and the height of these doors as well. And I think one day this actually used to be the grand dining table and this actually the dining hall. You can again see one of those majestic chandeliers along with some ornate seal, uh, details of the ceiling, at least what's left of the ceiling because it's been terribly decaying. Bars have just fallen down on the ground. Yet again, the electricity is also working in this room and look at this contrast. Over there is literally black mold on the wall. Over here the ceiling is severely, severely damaged but the light is still working and isn't that absolutely unreal? It's, it's just not right, I mean, <laughs> it's very strange. The electricity is still working in such a decayed building. I'm putting it off again because I think they can easily cause a fire inside of here. Also a ground mirror over here. Just want to say hi to all the new viewers. And yeah. Wondering if these ones open. But they don't seem stuck. Over here are still some pots for the coffee. And one mug standing there. The paint is also peeling off inside of these drawers. Oh, it's collapsed over here. I have to be careful. This one is closed, but have a look at the outside. They actually had their own balcony over here. Must have been a very nice place to live. And also a very nice place for a hotel, like it was one day. I think on the upstairs floors, we're actually gonna find like the remnants of like hotel rooms and everything. That's what I at least expect. I have not checked it out yet. Quite a big balcony. Let's close the window again. If we look at this side, we can still see parts of the original wallpaper, at least the last wallpaper. You can tell it's almost completely ripped off on that side, but you can still see how it looked one day. Before making our way to the next floor, I want to point out this room, which we do think was actually the kitchen back in its days. You can still see the pipes for the water supply, and there is still one lonely sink over here, but that's far it. Another door which has been barricaded, well. Oh, and look over here at the ceiling. They're actually trying to save the collapsed parts from falling down. I think it's been done quite a long time ago already. And it seems already a little bit too late. <laughs> it's literally only the part of the lamp which is still there of the ceiling. But I wonder, this is literally the part where there's the most weight, right? So why is this part still hanging there? And has the rest collapsed? It does not seem logic. Anyways, let's go upstairs, guys. I'm curious to see if there is also still some interesting bedrooms over there. Wow. Look at the stairs again going up. Bannister over here. Well, then over here. It's actually the first room. That was actually a bathroom. 
You can still see their bar top. Very moldy mirror over there. Oh, that looks disgusting. I won't show more of the toilet anymore. What have you found? A game. A game. It's actually quite cool. You could do it in this box and then you could close it by zipping it, right? Yeah. It looks like a book if you see it from the outside. You won't tell us a game. Maybe like a secret diary or something. Over here a piano. It was actually an electric one. And then in this room, well, again, it's a very, very poor room with a lot of decay. You can definitely tell that they were too late for saving this property. Well, there's some black mold, so I'm not staying here for too long, but I guess this was done by some photographers. They placed these puppets over here. And yeah, it's actually quite funny. Oh, there is a hat there on the wall, but oh my gosh, okay. I'm getting out of here. That is very, very bad. Some severe black mold. What's over here? It's another complete poor room actually. Not much left, there is like a wild west hat. It's actually from Disneyland, yeah. There's also some mount masks here laying on the ground. Some gloves. Well, over here was actually another bathroom. I guess they love the color of pink. Look at the shapes of this toilet. It's like a shell or something. It's very strange. A tiny bidet over here in the corner. Oh, and then actually over here was a beautiful room. So I guess this bathroom actually belongs to this bedroom. And wow. Okay. This is wonderful. I mean, have a look how pristine this bedroom still is. Wow, also a wonderful carpet, the curtains on the sides. Absolutely wonderful. Over here are even still their shoes standing. Right on the shelves, some shoes, some palms from the lady. Even some sneakers down below. I guess in these boxes there is also still shoes. Ah oh, no, they've been emptied out. Oh, the brooming kit over here. <laughs> Some souvenirs. A lot of them actually, I think they also really like traveling. There is an old photo on the ground. This man could have been a rabbit and part of the family. He might have been living here. Or maybe he was Mr. Abdullah Mah himself. Who knows? What is this? It looks like food. Or are those stones? This was definitely food. <laughs> and it's written in Arabic, so maybe they took it from somewhere in the Middle East. It looks repulsive, but 2019, that's strange, right? That's very recent. Yeah, that's not long ago. Oh my god, it came quite <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Literally a Game Boy game. Do you know the game? Revenge of the Gator. I've never heard of it. Would there be anything in the suitcase? 
I don't know. It doesn't seem like because it's pretty lightweighted. Oh, look at the elephant ornament over here. Yeah. If you need a band here. <laughs> Some bandage. And look, look over there. You see all the Arabic signs here? And these... I'm wondering what they are. And also some Arabic coins, right? Oh no, they are from Denmark. This, one, yeah. this is actually the Danish currency. Have you seen these papers over here, full of the Arabic signs? Thermal meter. And newspapers. Really? Oh, that's crazy. I've never seen an Arabic newspaper before. And then have a look at the bed of them. <laughs> this must have been from the woman. I think this is definitely a woman's dream to have a cabinet like this. And if you actually bend it open, you have literally like a mirror. All your makeup and all your brewing kits, the complete set. And they would just sit down over here, look to themselves. And eventually everything in front of them. And you can even close it again. It's the first time ever I see a cabinet like this. But I think many women who are watching this video actually like the concept. I wish I had one. Yeah. <laughs> My friend is saying she wished she owned one. It would be really nice. <laughs> Have you found some other coins? Yeah. It seems that they actually collected different currencies. I see euros. But I also see some old francs of Belgium. That's actually a Russian currency. They collected a lot of coins. What's this? Also, what did you say? Swedish? Denmark? It's interesting. They must have been collectors of all these different coins and currencies. Oh my gosh, look at this. This was actually not a normal bed. No, they had a complete built-in radio system in this bed. Look at it. Where you can just turn the buttons and change the channels. And then the speakers were actually built in on the sides. That's absolutely crazy. I've never ever seen this in a bed. My gosh. Look, this was an electronic alarm clock. They also just made the design of the bed with these spots of light right above it. And those were actually the speakers where the music was coming from. That's so incredibly inventive. I wish I had a bed like this. <laughs> that is incredible. And I've also found an ornament of Saudi Arabia. So I think that that was actually the place where the people came from. Right over here. And maybe a photo of the couple or maybe his son with his girlfriend, his wife, I don't know. But this is a very interesting place going into the history of these Arabian people, these sheikhs. This was once a set for cutlery, but all the cutlery is taken outside. Again, a wonderful hangar over here. Okay, now I'm wondering if I pull this cord over here, if the light will go on. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> so, you know, back in the days, they actually had these cords and before they went to bed, they would just pull the cord and the light would go out. So over here they also had wardrobes. Oh, they are still full of clothes. Have a look at this.
What I noticed is that they mainly have winter clothes, so I guess it's always pretty cold there in this area. And I think all their summer clothes they actually had in Saudi Arabia, where they originally came from. Over here again, a bandage kit, a med kit, cigar box, which is empty. And let's go to the next room. This is actually a very modern room, in contrast with the other ones. Some garden chairs standing over here and... Yeah, again, not much charm or any special things here. There was a refrigerator here. What I did notice is actually this is in front of the window. Look, they actually put coals on top of it. So maybe those were some Arabian herbs or something, which caused a specific smell or scent. So maybe it's a ritual. Well, if any Arabic viewers know, then just leave it down in the comment section again. Okay, let's walk along the corridor to the other rooms on this floor. What's this one? Very strange. Oh, they had their own private sauna inside of this castle. This was literally like a mobile sauna. Have a look inside. They did not use the sauna in the last days for a sauna, but they actually made a storage of it for all the toys of the children. There is even a giant Mickey Mouse doll over there. <laughs> Crazy. Also a rocking horse. Wow. Well, and this was a bathroom with a luxurious bathtub over here, almost like a jacuzzi. Even still the toothpaste and brushes are here. We had a drying rack for their clothes. There was even a suitcase right on top of the sauna. And some photos of cute kitties. Well, at the end of the corridor, there is two last rooms. Let's see. I think this was not a bad room. But imagine that back in the days, I think these rooms were actually the hotel rooms of this place. Over here, all keys with actually, again, Arabic language written on the signs. Just have a look. Right now you're able to see it more properly. Yeah, this was definitely a bedroom. A very plain one though. Also a barometer on the wall there. I love the marble sink. <laughs> Cannabis. Massage gel. I'm wondering if the water is also still running. That's strange. So electricity is still running, but the water is turned off. Again, there are Wild West hats from Disneyland Paris. And also a lot of clothes again here inside. Also some fur. I think it was definitely from the woman. Maybe this Arabic man actually met a Luxembourgish woman one day and that's actually the reason when they married and he decided okay let's buy a costly or who knows it might be a theory and then I actually just walked inside another pristine bedroom I like this one too there's a lot of cassette records over here wow Look at this, it's from a company, an Islamic company. Also inside of here, there is a lot of tiny things. Who 
Wow, that's also very neat. The way it's been stuffed with the red velvet, the bed as well, and then the cabinet over here, it's almost like a vanity with a mirror right above it. There is so many stuff. It's very hard because I'm filming with one hand and with the other hand I'm trying to hold my flashlight of my phone. There's some wool. Some plasters. This is even still an unopened cookie. Again, even some coins over there again. And this was a bill. It was actually for Abdullah Akai. And that was definitely the owner of this place because his name is actually on all the receipts, notes and letters we found inside. Again, there is plenty of clothes. Makes me always so sad that people leave so many clothes just left unused and left unloved. I mean, they could definitely make people happy with this. Over here, the sheets and some pillows. <laughs> and again, this kitty doll. <laughs> and I look over here again, it's the same photo of the Arabic couple. Also a very, very well-known portrait there on the wall of the crying boy. And I think that this compartment was actually one of the castle towers. And it's like the outbuilding of it. And what they exactly use it for? I think just for storage only. What a shame. Then also look over here. <laughs> Completely untouched, this collection of these tiny figurines. Let's go to the final floor of this castle and like I mentioned in the beginning of the video I really like the fact that we actually found many different things and this castle in general looks so much different from the castles we've explored in France but this part looks quite dutchy I mean this part of the staircase is severely crooked I hope it's stable enough I'm just walking on the side but this does not seem like the best idea. Okay, well, I've made it. At least it felt pretty stable. That's one thing. Oh, there's even another floor right above this one. I think that's the attic part. Now let's check inside of here. Well, it's just a mattress. And again, some wardrobes, but it looks like they've been emptied out. Oh, bathroom over here. Some very cozy tiles. With the roses on them. Toilet over there. And look over there are some trainers of Adidas inside the wardrobe.
this was yet another bathroom. Must have been a pretty big Arabian family living here. And look how this is made with the bathtub. It's very uncommon. Look at this pink room. I think it was definitely a girl living inside of this one. Also some pink clothes over here. And then have a look on the wall again, this tiny tapestry with the Arabian language. Oh yeah, this was definitely from a younger girl. You can also see all these toys over here. It's a very strange place, guys. I, I don't know what to say about this castle, but it's definitely a very different room from other ones I've seen. Also, look at this room. What the heck? Okay, I was not expecting this, but literally, look how many clothes person who won't this room belong to actually owned all these hangers here my gosh <laughs> it's almost like I just walked inside of a store a clothes store this is unreal so much mess all around My gosh. Well, you can clearly tell that the Arabian family who was living here was wealthy. And where they are now, I don't know, but I think the original owner passed away because of illness. I think the other members of the family, maybe they are living close to the property. Maybe they just went back to Saudi Arabia. I don't know, but it's strange that they never inherited it. Because that's how it often goes in these Arabian families. Well, we just found some money here on the bed, and apparently this is the old German currency. It's the oh, Reichsmark it's or D-Mark. Deutsche Mark, okay. Well, a lot of old German coins. <laughs> also still <laughs> the flip-flops and everything standing here. What a place, and I guess in this room as well, yeah, you can see electricity is still working in each and every room. Somebody must still be paying the electricity bills <laughs> here on the grounds. The fluffy clump of Amsterdam, definitely a souvenir from the Netherlands. Yet again, another bar room. I lost count of how many bathrooms there are actually inside of this castle. I think each individual actually had their own bathroom and their own bedroom. Also a lot of mess. You can see that there is also again some dolls inside of these bags. This door was actually going to the bathroom I just showed. Then lastly, I think there is two last rooms inside of this castle. The first one is right over here. It's another bedroom. Actually two beds inside. I think that these floors were all for the younger children, as far as I could see. Wild West movie here. Wow. 
Well, and then the last room is actually this bathroom over here. And again, it's so typical inside of all these bathrooms, at least most of them, they actually made like these drawers right behind it. It's a design which often comes back in many rooms. Actually wear like lights. Also a vanity over here. And this very comfortable seat. Oh, it's actually an inflatable one. It's still filled with air. Okay, so finally, besides the toilet, there was another staircase going up. I want to show the final floor of this castle. I think this is one of the other towers. Oh yeah, this is the, actually the tower in the front where I'm in. Look at all the wallpaper with the flowers. And this was literally only one room with this bed. And again, plenty of clothes. And what's this over here? Oh, it was actually a cassette recorder player. You could put the cassettes inside and you could hear what was said. And again, an Arabian list over here. So with that having showed, I want to close the video right over here. This is actually the very first Luxembourgish castle I've explored and shown to you on the channel. And this was definitely also a very strange place. I'm really wondering what the story now actually is of the past occupants and owners. It was definitely a big Arabian family. Uh, and yeah, I'm just wondering what happened. I do have a feeling that the last resident and owner of this castle actually deceased and was of older age. At least that's the theory I've made out of what I found. Just leave your thoughts right down below in the comment section. And as always, I want to thank everybody for watching again to this week's video. If you enjoyed this place and my perspective on it, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button and also feel free to subscribe down below and leave a comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you want to support our videos, that's possible. You will find a link down below in the video description of our Patreon page and our PayPal. And in the end, I want to send everybody uh, much love, peace and blessings from Luxembourg. And we will see you on the next adventure. Peace out and bye bye.